a zoo under fire for shooting and killing an endangered gorilla instead of tranquilizing him. After the animal dragged a child around its enclosure, the child had fallen into that enclosure. Officials are now defending their actions. ABC's Alex Perez has the latest from the Cincinnati Zoo. And we warn you, some of the video you're about to see may be disturbing. Alex? Hey, good morning, Robin. You know, the gorilla exhibit here remains closed, but I wanted to give you an idea of the height of that barrier that the child climbed over. This is a baby gate. The barrier was about this high, three feet tall. The image is jaw-dropping. Oh, my God! A 450-pound gorilla dragging around a three-year-old boy like a rag doll. This morning, the Cincinnati Zoo defending its decision to put down the 17-year-old endangered silverback named Harambe. That child's life was in danger, and people who question that or are Monday morning quarterbacks or second-guessers don't understand that you can't take a risk with a silverback gorilla. They're very big. A child has fallen into the gorilla cage. The nerve-wracking ordeal unfolding Saturday afternoon, the child's mother watching from above. Mommy's right here. Authorities say the child climbed over the three-foot barrier, made his way through wires and bushes, and then plunged the 15 feet into the moat. The gorilla cornering the boy and then picking him up. This child was being dragged around. His head was banging on concrete. This was not a gentle thing. At one point, the primate stops and appears to hold the child's hand, later propping the boy up from behind and eventually dragging him all the way to the other side of the cage. After 10 excruciating minutes, officials made the decision to shoot and kill him, saying that a tranquilizer dart would have been too risky. They had to do something very quickly. The dart takes too long. The child would not have a chance. The child, home with his family now, suffering only minor injuries. This video from 2014 shows a three-foot-high railing that separates the crowd from the exhibit. The barriers are safe. The trouble with barriers is that whatever the barrier is, some people can get past it. Much the same way you might lock your car and sometimes people get in your car. Uh, and no, the zoo's not negligent. Many taking to social media, criticizing the child's parents. A change.org petition calling for them to be held responsible for not supervising their child has nearly 300,000 signatures. But his mother saying in a now deleted Facebook post, as a society, we are quick to judge how a parent could take their eyes off of their child. Accidents happen, but I am thankful that the right people were in the right place. Monday, a special vigil held for Harambe, who was nicknamed Handsome. A Memorial for the animal now growing. And now word the federal government is investigating the incident of the gorilla exhibit here set to reopen on Saturday. Robin. All right, Alex, thank you. And joining us now from Miami is wildlife expert and communications director at Zoo Miami, Ron McGill. Thank you for your time this, this morning and your insight here, Ron. So the zoo there in Cincinnati, they stand by the decision that they made. Did they make the right decision, in your opinion? They they absolutely did, Robin. This was a tragic situation. That gorilla was on loan to Cincinnati from our zoo in Miami, so there's a personal connection there. And having said that, they made the absolutely right decision. I need to let you know that that gorilla had no intention of hurting that child, and I don't think anybody believes that. However, that gorilla was disoriented. He was agitated. He didn't understand his strength. If you watch that video, you see how he takes that child into the corner. He's trying to get away from the commotion. The child is crying. The people are screaming. This was just a perfect storm of bad situations that ended in tragedy. And you alluded to it, Ron, but some people felt that when they saw the gorilla holding the child's hand that, and other things, that they thought that the gorilla was trying to protect the child, but you say that just, just isn't so. Well, I don't think he's trying to protect the child. He's confused. He certainly wasn't trying to hurt the child, right. but he didn't understand his strength. And when you see him whip him through the water like that, as the director said, that child could hit his head on the concrete. You, things you didn't see mm. as he was lifting the, ch the child up on the exhibit. He was banging the child on the rocks. This was becoming an escalated uh, situation for that gorilla. He was becoming more and more upset. It was a horrible, horrible situation, but that decision had to be made because had it not been made and that child had been badly injured or, God forbid, killed, we'd be having a much bigger discussion about why didn't the zoo do something sooner. That's true. The, the three-foot barrier that we keep referring to and, and seeing, is there more that zoos, not just there in Cincinnati, but across the country can do to protect those that are, that are coming to see this wildlife? I can guarantee you, Robin, that all zoos right now are reevaluating all of these barriers. You know, unfortunately, sometimes something like this happens and you say, you know, the Cincinnati Zoo, that barrier was great for 38 years. Then this happens and everybody's reevaluating. Anybody who says, oh, we're not, we're fine, we're comfortable. No, I can 
tell you, every zoo is reevaluating everything right Probably now. Probably so. All right, Ron McGill, thank you. Okay, let's bring in Dan Abrams to get a little bit more on this. There's a lot of anger about there about what the zoo did, and also at the parents. Uh, some people saying the parents should be held responsible. Yeah, and, and then you got to look at this uh, criminal civil. You got some people even saying they should be charged with a crime here. There's a misdemeanor in Ohio about endangering children uh, by not properly supervising them, thereby opening them up uh, to substantial risk. I don't think it's a chance the parents, uh, the mother is going to be held responsible criminally. Civil, uh, separate, separate question, but that would require the zoo effectively suing um, them. I don't think that's going to happen either. Is there, Sorry. Sorry. is there any chance that the zoo could be sued? In I think it's a better chance that the zoo is sued potentially by the parents. So the, the, the mother could say, look, the fact that a three-year-old was able to get into that enclosure is in and of itself a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's tough because, you know, we, when we all go to the zoo and they want to make it so it's that you feel like you're there in their environment, but you're not. And it's just of trying to protect us from them and also not make them so encumbered. It's, it's just so difficult. It, look, it, this is a tragedy no matter how you look at yeah. it. Yeah. So. Okay. Dan, thanks very much.